Hi there. This is my second video to help with child loss and being able to live and cope with child loss. Um, I got some really good feedback from my last one, so thank you ever so much. If you do like this, can you please like it? Because as I said before, that tells YouTube that it's worth displaying so it doesn't drop to the bottom of the list. I've made some notes on this one because I don't want to miss anything out. And please bear in mind that this is personal to me and um, it may not apply to you or your friends or your relatives, but I think probably most of it will. It's called What to Say, What Not to Say When Someone is Grieving the Loss of a Child. And I think this is an area we find incredibly difficult, us grieving parents, because people haven't got a clue what to say to us. They haven't got a clue where to start. And so half the time they say nothing and keep away because they're terrified of upsetting us. Well, let me tell you, for starters, it's very unlikely you will upset us any more than we already are. But hearing from people and having contact from people is incredibly important. So please don't shy away. Here are some of the common things that people say they think they're trying to help, but actually it can be incredibly insulting or offensive to us. Um, I just don't know what to say. I suppose that's fair enough to be honest because no one knows what to say, but it doesn't really help at all. I feel like I'm walking on eggshells all the time. Well, you will be because your relative, your friend is suffering like they've never suffered before in their life. So I can understand that their emotions are all over the place. Please don't say things like they're in a better place. Because do you absolutely categorically know that for starters? And secondly, as a parent, we cannot imagine a better place than our child being here with us. So that's incredibly upsetting. They are with God now. Same thing applies, really. I understand if you're religious, that probably means a different thing to you. But to me, I just find it very upsetting because do we categorically know there's a God? And do I categorically know my child is with them? No. So I find it really, really upsetting. Another one is at least they're not suffering anymore. That's really upsetting as well because they're not here with us, they're dead. And to us, there is no worse suffering than being dead. And we are suffering a lot. So that is unhelpful as well. Um, I understand or I know what you're going through. Do you? Because unless you've lost a child, you really, really don't. And I can promise you, I've lost my mother and two grandparents. And that was nothing compared to what I'm feeling now. So even if you've lost someone close, unless you lost a child, you really don't understand how it feels. You need to move on. We'd love to. We'd love to be able to move on. It is not something we have any control over. So when you say something like that to us, it's incredibly hurtful. Think positive. I've got a great analogy for you here. Somebody told me this when I was in the very early weeks of grieving. They said to whoever said this to them, OK, I will cut your leg off. And while you are screaming and writhing on the floor and there is blood pouring everywhere, I will say to you, you need to think more positive and you need to be quiet. You need to calm down. Those kind of things. It's impossible, isn't it? When you're in a huge amount of pain, it's actually impossible. So being told we need to move on is most unhelpful and being told to be positive is most unhelpful. Time is a great healer. Well, I think in time you learn to deal with things better. You learn to compartmentalize things better. You learn to hide your feelings from others and just fall apart when you get home, perhaps. But I don't think it heals. I don't think you ever get over losing a child. And it would be naive to think the person you love will. I don't recognize my person anymore. Well, I'm not surprised because they are completely and utterly broken. They are completely and utterly changed. 
and they will never be the same person again. In time, they will learn to live with it and they will move forward, but they will never be the same person again that you knew before they lost their child. And you just have to accept that. Don't cry or you'll get over it. I have very little control over my emotions. So if someone says to me, don't cry, I can't just stop crying. And that again is an upsetting and offensive remark to me because I haven't got any choice. You'll get over it. No, I won't. I will never get over losing my child. And don't forget, if you say don't cry to someone, because perhaps it's making you feel uncomfortable, that we don't have any choice. And crying is a really important part of healing. It's necessary. So it shouldn't be dissuaded. Now I'm going to move on to more useful things that you can say, because I know people are really stuck with what to say and they don't want to offend the person who's hurting, the person who's lost their child. So I thought I'd give you some pointers again, and this is personal to me. I'm not saying it's true for everybody. And perhaps if people have got different comments, either positive or negative, you could put them in the comments below this video so that you could help other people, because I'm sure I won't have covered everything. Um, so the first useful thing I find people can say is, I'm so very, very sorry. And you can add expletives there if you wish to. Um, but acknowledging it is really important. Um, you and your family didn't deserve this. No, we didn't. And we certainly didn't ask for it. So again, acknowledging that helps me. Um, I have no idea what you're going through, but I'm here for you. That's a really important one because unless you've lost a child, you will have no idea what we're going through. You cannot have any idea what we're going through. Remember I said I've lost my mom and grandparents as well, and that was completely different. I'll be honest with you, that was a walk in the park compared to this. So to acknowledge you have no idea what a person's going through is quite helpful. I'm here for you. Please don't ever say that unless you really mean it, because I've had quite a few people say that to me since, since I lost Cameron. And um, then they disappeared into the ether. So if you're going to make the commitment of saying I'm here for you, please make sure you have enough resilience to actually be able to do that. And don't say it if you haven't. What happened is incredibly unfair. It's absolutely true. It is incredibly unfair. As far as I know, my son was, apart from being gluten intolerant, incredibly healthy and had a long life ahead of him. So I feel that what's happened is incredibly unfair. And if someone acknowledges that, that helps me. Life is so unbelievably unfair. Again, it's absolutely true. I agree. You have every right to feel angry. Yes, I do. I've lost my 17, almost 18 year old son and I do have a right to be angry. And also you need to remember that anger is a key part of grieving. It's one of those stages. So people will feel angry and they will get angry. And you've got to just forgive that and understand it's part of the process. Another one is you have every right to feel absolutely broken. So if someone's crying their eyes out, rather than saying to them, don't cry or stop crying, just say, yes, you have every right to feel like that. Every right. And what can I do for you is also useful. Because a lot of people who are trying to deal with someone who's grieving, particularly if they've lost a child, they haven't got a clue what to do to help them. They just don't know what to do. So ask your person, say, what can I do to help you? Now I'm going to move on to what to expect of your person, of your friend, of your relative when they're going through this, when they've lost a child. Your person will be absolutely broken and they can't function properly. They can't think properly, they can't act properly. They're all over the place. They have suffered the equivalent of quite a major brain trauma. I feel some days like I've got amnesia. I just cannot remember things. So they will not function properly for a long time. 
people will be very up and down and that can change in a second. So you can be feeling all right ish and then a memory will jump into your head and three seconds later you're crying your eyes out. So they'll be incredibly up and down for a long, long time. They will cry a lot. As I've said earlier, it's part of grieving is part of healing. Don't try and stop it. They'll be able to offer you very little support, meaning if anything happens in your life after they've lost their child, they're not going to be there for you because they have so little to give. So please don't expect them to be there for you and then get upset or angry because they're not, because they can't be there for you. They just can't. Their behaviour will be very erratic. They'll say things they don't mean. Quite regularly, probably. They'll act in strange ways. I've heard many bereaved parents say they felt that they actually went a little bit crazy for several months. It's quite normal. It's quite normal. But their behaviour will be erratic. And you have to accept that. They'll make poor judgments. I think that old saying about you shouldn't try and do anything major in your life within the first 12 months and not make any major decisions is <laughs> absolutely true because you will make very, very poor decisions. So don't ask your person to make decisions. And if they are making strange or erratic decisions, try to gently support them. Don't criticise them because they're doing their absolute best to cope with their pain. They'll be very unreliable. So they may agree to come out and meet you for a walk and then 10 minutes before they fall to pieces and they can't do it. They literally cannot do it. So don't get cross with them and don't rely on them because they, we cannot help it. They get angry easily and their emotions are all over the place. So again, this comes down to erratic behaviour. It's not the person you knew before and you have to understand and accept that. The slightest thing can set us off. The slightest thing can upset us. Just go with it. You don't have to try and fix it or correct it. Just go with it. We've got really poor concentration. We're awful at remembering things, as I've already mentioned. But if it comes to trying to do a job or go back to work or even drive sometimes, our concentration is not good. And you must accept that and not expect very much at all of that person. And we suffer from poor sleep. And this will also affect our behaviour. We all know if you don't sleep properly, it has major effects on your mental health. And we suffer a lot from bad dreams and nightmares and waking up in the middle of the night, falling to pieces. But there's something else I just wanted to mention to you, and I added this on at the end, actually. The absolute worst thing you can do is to say nothing when you meet up with that person and to not acknowledge what's happened or what they've been through. So, for example, if you think you're being kind to that person by just uh, talking about what you've done this week, holidays you've been on, blah, 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 and you don't mention their dreadful loss or you don't mention their child, that is incredibly painful to us because at the moment there is nothing more on our mind and nothing more important to us than that lost child and we still love them just as much as we did before and we still want to talk about them and even though it hurts as you can see i'm getting upset now we still want to talk about them because we still love them and we find it very upsetting if people try to act as if nothing's happened and don't mention anything so when you first meet someone please acknowledge it even if they cry, even if they get upset, that's OK. But please say something in the list that I've given you so that you are acknowledging what's happened and what they've been through. Please don't ignore it. So in summary, don't try to sugarcoat what's happened because at best it will make no difference and at worst you will really upset or insult someone. We can't get away from what's happened and we can't hide it. So trying to sugarcoat it or put a positive slant on it or not acknowledge it at all will really, really not help your person. 
I hope you found this video useful and um, please share it with your friends and family and anyone you know, co-workers perhaps, who you think need to understand what you should and shouldn't say. I know, as I said earlier, it's like walking on eggshells. I know it's a tricky path, but I hope this helps you and your friends and family to understand what's important to us, what we need you to say, and what absolutely will not help us. Um, please let me know if this video is useful in the comments um, and then I will look at making some more in the future. Thanks ever so much and good luck on your journey.